pride precedes the fall. The Jedi Council knows this all too well. The Jedi Order was almost at the height of its power during the events of the prequel trilogy. They sat high atop their pinnacle on Coruscant, and in their arrogance forgot that their temple was built on top of an ancient Sith sanctuary. Needless to say, such arrogance led to the mistakes that eventually led to Palpatine's first galactic empire. Worst of all, many mistakes they could have prevented. Too bad these ten mistakes have already been made, and let's take a closer look at them. Interfered in other areas. Although Obi-Wan is versed in politics, he realizes that a Jedi should not interfere in matters that are not within his purview. As he said himself, he is not brave enough to do so. It's a shame the Jedi didn't share his apprehension of the boardrooms and tribunes, for it was they who had a hand in overturning the Senate, which soon fell into the tenacious hands of Shiv Palpatine. The Jedi fell into his trap and unwittingly helped the Chancellor become more powerful. If the Council was solely minding their own business, it would be much harder for Palpatine to portray them as a power-hungry cult, which in turn would deprive him of certain support. Suppressed Anakin's Emotions It should be clarified that Anakin Skywalker does have destructive tendencies and sometimes put himself or others in danger due to impulsive emotions. And I agree that those emotions were important to curb. However, the Council didn't need to suppress other kinds of emotions like the Mother Incident or Anger. Yes, the Jedi have a code about restraining emotions, but instead of helping the cause, it only increased Anakin's fears and anxiety. I think there were better ways to teach him to let go of attachments or deal with emotional overload besides ignoring or saying get over it, allowing Darth Maul to control Mandalore. It's safe to say that the Jedi were completely unprepared for the Sith and Darth Maul in particular. They handled them rather poorly, losing one of the Masters. They also allowed Maul to take over the entire planet Mandalore, increasing the Sith influence. What did the Council do? Sent one Obi-Wan? Do I understand correctly that first the Council talks about the Sith as an ancient threat, and then sends only one Jedi, albeit a very powerful one, to solve the problem? Bottom line, Obi-Wan failed and had to ask for reinforcements. Ahsoka's unwarranted banishment. Another case that perfectly demonstrates how arrogant the Council can be. Furthermore, it also shows that they can't really do anything right. They banished Ahsoka Tano on one suspicion and didn't even prove her guilty. Anakin proved Ahsoka's innocence and poked the Council in the errors, but Ahsoka has already learned a very valuable lesson. Jedi rarely take care of their own. They didn't make Anakin a master. Based on suspicions and hints regarding Shiv Palpatine, the Council invited Anakin to join them. True, not as a master, but as a mere Jedi whose only function was to spy on the Chancellor. Not only did they choose to pry into someone else's domain, but they didn't think about Anakin's feelings. They could have assigned the task without implicating the Council. Instead, they first beckoned with a tasty bun, and then took it in front of his very nose. It was another blow to Anakin's Jedi loyalty, and further proof that Jedi don't take care of each other well. They also handed Palpatine a new apprentice with their own hands, Mace Windu's solution. Obviously, for all of Palpatine's atrocities, he deserves only one. On the other hand, back then, even before the Empire was founded, he should have been tried and punished. Even Anakin thought about it, but Windu decided to take matters into his own hands and made the quick and reckless decision to destroy Palpatine on behalf of the Council. Oddly enough, until five minutes ago they had planned to arrest him, but Windu, for some reason, changed his mind. The thing is, if Windu had listened to Anakin, they would have reversed Palpatine's plan to gain the sympathy of the Senate. After all, Anakin was on the witness stand, with three fallen Jedi Masters as compelling evidence. Neither did Luke and Leia's training. After Order 66, it was very important for the Order to regain their footing. Every soul sensitive to the Force was important to them. Even other Jedi, such as Ahsoka, were trying to save those souls, or at least gather them together. That's why it's perplexing to see the decision of the Council and Obi-Wan personally to not only separate Luke and Leia, but not teach them in any way at all. They had the opportunity to take care of at least one of them, to teach them and make them a formidable Jedi. After all, Luke had already become one, so what had prevented them from training him sooner? Obi-Wan tricked Luke. Speaking of Luke, many of his injuries, both physical and psychological, could have been prevented if Obi-Wan had been more honest with him. 
In fact, Luke could have saved his arm if Obi-Wan had been honest about Darth Vader being his father. In that case, Luke probably wouldn't have confronted Vader, even though their first encounter, in the movie, is one of the most iconic moments. Failure to take the Sith seriously As discussed above, the Council looked at the Sith through their fingers as a threat not worth paying close attention to. One would assume that the Council would get serious after the Phantom Menace, but not really. Instead of investigating any potential Sith leads, the Jedi started doing completely different things. They also ignored most of the signs, including Yoda's vision of Anakin becoming a Sith. Exile. Last but not least, the Council's, or what was left of it after Order 66 mistake, was the decision to go into exile. Yes, Yoda, we're talking about you. Frankly, the decision to stay on a forgotten swampy planet while the survivors of Order 66 gather Jedi from the shards and risk themselves for the sake of the few Force-sensitive beings is pure selfishness. Obi-Wan is no better. He chose to just sit on Tatooine instead of devoting wasted years to helping the surviving Jedi or training the same Luke. The long-awaited series should shed some light on the things Obi-Wan has been doing, but that doesn't change the fact that he could have done more.